All of my works are sculptural. I started off with sculpture. I was making all of the sculptures move uh, with electronics and engineering and it was getting increasingly complicated. I had a picture in my mind of a sculpture that uh, I wanted to make and I couldn't. And the only way that I could really do it was to make it in a video. That's the only way that I could picture doing it. So now I see all of the videos as sculptures. The works, um, I think, are generally uh, absurdist in nature. When you look at the locations of my works, uh, I think that's where you can pick up on that the most. The settings are extremely uh, harsh, and I'm very interested in this idea that there is a, a divorce between man and his setting. A lot of the works in this show, I think, deal with that theme and also with the idea that man makes his setting. Looking at an environment which is so harsh that you don't belong in it anymore. A lot of the films have a man in an unlivable condition and it reflects, I suppose, my own condition and that I see a universal, a universal human condition really. All the films deal with uh, myth and ritual. Myth is a thing that's said. Ritual is a thing that's done. This ritual gesture is performative and without it being performed, the ritual doesn't really exist. Through the repetitive nature, this repetitive gesture, it, it, you reconcile whatever is the struggle that you're trying to, to, to deal with. Endgame, uh, instead of having a beginning and an end, it has, I think there's 19 different clips of these small performances. The program takes those clips randomly, so you never watch it the same, ever. In that way, it's also playing with this endless end. There's something beautiful in the colours of the film, but there's something also very sad in the, in, the, in the slowness or in the absurdity of a lot of the gestures, a lot of the actions within the film as well, and the ruinous setting. In this case, it's probably the least overtly harsh uh, setting. It's extremely hard to get to, which is something you can't get from watching the film. You have to really trek in to get there. It's on a promontory. The environment, it, it, the wind is, is incredible there. When I'm filming, often I'm caught in a blizzard. The film in some way creates a space where you miss that, uh, which is, is, is part of it, but um, usually they're very hard for me as well and for those who are in the film. When looking at the film, I hope that they see these uh, ritual gestures and feel that they're endless and that they could just continue and there's something meditative about them. And I think that's the point of reconciliation, this meditation that you get from the film. The performance uh, watches a group of people, there were 20 performers, on the forecourt of Acker. And Acker offers this, this beautiful space <laughs> for a performance because Acker itself is extremely sculptural as a backdrop. Performers were asked to take a rock from the back of the rock wall and put it to the front and in that way the rock wall moved across the forecourt and it meanders which I think works perfectly with the idea of desire line. They chose the direction or the rocks and the way that they were moving chose the direction for them. I didn't want the performance to be an event. I'd rather my performances be something that you pass by that you may just notice. I need them to move, so it's the same idea before with the sculptures, that I, I have this uh, urge to make things uh, change. Mm. I try to put other things in the way sometimes so that I can, it, it tends to make my practice better. So it's an urge, I think, uh, without it being a want necessarily. So it's something that I need to do all the time.